What's up, everybody? This is uh, Justin. Welcome back to Archangel's Big Medium. Uh, today, I'm going to do a little bit of a different kind of video um, in my uh, Muslim uh, Orthodox Christian uh, conversation. Um, and it centers around what is the Word of God, okay? So, um, the Muslims uh, believe that the Word of God is the Quran, right? This book, the Quran. Uh, and particularly, they believe that the Quran in the original Arabic is the Word of God because God uh, gave uh, the message to um, the angel Gabriel, and Gabriel spoke to Muhammad and said, write these things, write these words, okay? And then I guess maybe Muhammad remembered it because supposedly um, he was uh, not literate, so he would remember what the angel told him, and then he would tell his scribe, and the scribe would write it down. Now, um, that's that's what I've 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 kind of gleaned, right, uh, in my conversation with them. Now, correct me in the comments down below if that's not how you understand the Quran to be. Um, and so, for them, the the scripture, for them, the Quran, the scripture is the word of God. And the scripture is the revelation of God's message to um, the world, okay? And that's not the way that Christians understand what the word of God is. And I want to show this to you, okay? So for us, the Word of God, okay, let me actually write this here, write my font, make this bigger here. So um, we've got a few phrases here. So we have uh, the Word of God, and we have the angel of the Lord, okay? Um, what's important to keep in mind here is that the term angel, uh, it means messenger. Okay. John the Baptist is called an angel. Okay. Um, all right. He's called an angel. He's called uh, the the you know the the angel of God. Right. I can show you that here. In um, ooh, we'll call it uh, Mark chapter one, I believe. Um. Here it is. As it is written in the prophets, behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare the war, uh, the way before thee. Right? The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of remission for the remission of sins, for repentance for the remission of sins. Okay? So we understand that this messenger here is an angel. I can show you here in Greek. Um, here we go. Uh, angelon, right here. Oop. Angelon, that's the word angel, okay? Um, if I go here to my, uh, word study, here it is, angelon again. Okay, I can hit this button here. And I'll say, angelos. Right, a messenger, especially an angel, by implication a pastor. Right, so sometimes angel means um, a, a spiritual being, and sometimes angel means uh, just a human being. Okay, so um, let's let's look at that. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna go back here to my KJV because that's useful. Now, I have this uh, search tool here, and I'm going to search the phrase angel, or not angel of the Lord, we're going to say uh, word of God, okay? And you're going to see something interesting. 
right? Um, oh, here, let me uh, put quotations on that. It'll stop showing every time those phrase words. Okay. So, um, no, I want the exact phrase. There we go. All right. So um, you're going to see here, okay? But the word of God came unto Shemaiah, Shemaiah, the man of God, saying, and it came to pass the same night that the word of God came to Nathan, saying. So this is a, a being that comes to the prophet and says something, okay? Um it came to pass the night that the word of God came to Nathan, saying, uh, here's another one, every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. So here's an example of uh, not a being being referred to, right? Um, but that's by far uh, the minority, right? Um, I can take a look here again. I'm going to type in the word of the Lord, Okay. After these things, the word of God came unto Abram in a vision, right? So how, how do you see a word, right? Saying, fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward, right? Uh, again, behold, the, uh, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, this shall not be thine ear. He that feared the word of the Lord among the servants of Pharaoh made his servants and his cattle. Okay, so that's not particular. Um, you see here. Uh, according to, okay, so according to the word of the Lord by the hand of Moses. Um, you see here. Let's find another example. Samuel. Um See here, and the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. Vision of what? Vision of the word of the Lord, right? Um, uh, so this is this is important. Okay, the word of the Lord came to Solomon, saying, "So this is a being that is coming to the prophets." Okay. And he proclaims a message to them, and then they proclaim that message. So, functionally speaking, the way that the Quran shows the function of Gabriel, right, where Gabriel gives a message to the uh, Muhammad to write something down, right? Functionally speaking, that is what the Word of God is in the Bible, right? The Word of the Lord God. Uh, the word of the Lord comes to a prophet and says something. Does that make sense? Um, here it is. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite. The word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite saying, right? Uh, a couple of times, right? So, uh, and most of the time, that's, you know, uh, the way that you're going to see this phrase, the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord came unto me the second time saying, what seest thou? Okay. And this is the way that the scripture talks about the word of the Lord, okay? This is vital to understanding how we understand this. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah saying, see this? See this? The word of the Lord came unto Zechariah, okay? This is what Christians understand the word of God to be. The word of God is not necessarily the text itself. Now, the word, of the, Lord, the word of God will come, this is a being, the word of God will come to a person, a prophet, and tell them to write something, and that, and that prophet will write something. And so, I guess, as a derivative sense, the, the, whatever that they wrote is also the word of God, right? But that's in a secondary sense. So the scripture is the word of God in a secondary sense, but in a primary sense, the word of God is a being, okay? Check this out. We also have the messenger of God, or the angel of, uh, the angel of the Lord, 
Okay. And this is interesting, right? The angel of the Lord found her by a fountain in the waters, right? Um, this is this one is really interesting. Let, let's think a little of this. Exodus 3 2. Everybody knows the story about how God spoke to um the uh spoke to Moses through the bush, right? Uh the bush was on fire, but it was not consumed. I do not know if that story is in the Quran, uh, but certainly it's in the Bible, and certainly it's in the Dead Sea Scrolls, and certainly it was in the Bible that uh, Muhammad told the Jews to hold to, right? Hold to the Torah. Exodus is part of the Torah, right? Check this out. This is neat. Moses kept uh, the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. He led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with the fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great side, a sight why the bush is not burned. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called out unto him uh, out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Now notice, God called out to him where? From where? Out of the midst of the bush. Okay. Out of the midst of the bush. And he said, draw uh, not hot nigh hither, put off thy shoes from thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. It is my understanding that Muslims uh, take their shoes off when they pray. I could be wrong. I think that's called sila, right? Let me, let me double check here. Sala, maybe. Am I saying it right? Um, okay, maybe it's Sila. Whoa, that's not right. Sala prayer. That's yeah, no no shoes. No shoes, right? Um, I don't know if you always are not supposed to wear shoes, but from what I understand, yeah, so no shoes. From what I understand of uh, Wu Do, oh, socks. Socks. Interesting. Okay. Was that, was that an Orthodox? Was that a Muslim or? Okay, so I don't know. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't know if you're supposed to take your shoes off or not. Um, I see a lot of people taking their shoes off. Okay. But the reason why they're taking their shoes off, right, is because they believe that they're in the presence of God. As far as I know, I don't know if that's true. But as far as I know, right? So Moses is told to take his shoes off. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. This is interesting because he says, I am the God of thy... Who says? Who says? The person in the bush. Who's the person in the bush? The person in the bush is the angel of the Lord, okay? So the angel of the Lord is God. Now, what's interesting is if you look at this uh, in Hebrew, which I'll do right here, um, we use the phrase of, right? Uh, but that's just an English translation. Um, let's see here. Hebrew Old Testament. All right, Oof. here it is. Malak Yahweh. Okay, Malak Yahweh. Right, like Hebrew or like like Arabic. Um, Hebrew is written from right to left. Okay, so this is Malak Yahweh, or we say we say. Um, uh, we say the angel of the Lord, but really this is, man, how do I get that? Oh my gosh. Man, going to make this thing work right after. There we go. Um, so literally this is um, the Yahweh angel, right? <laughs> Yahweh angel, right? So, so this is this image is what it is. It's this image. Um, 
And this image is the same being as the word of the Lord. Okay, the message of the Lord, the Yahweh angel, these are the, this is the same being, same being. So sometimes the Yahweh angel is shown to be God himself. And what's really interesting here uh, is we go here to uh, Exodus, right? Um, ooh, I think it's like Exodus 32, I think. No, that's the golden calf. Let me see here. All right, hold on. Let me search it. Um, twenty-three, twenty-one. It was twenty-three. I think I said that right. No, I said it was thirty-three. Okay, so check this out. Okay. Behold, I send an angel before you to guard on the way and to bring you to the place that I have prepared. Pay careful attention to him and obey his voice. Do not rebel against him, for he will not pardon your transgression. Why? For my name is in him. My name is in him. Right? My name is in him. This is an angel that carries the name of Yahweh, okay. So uh, this is this is an interesting character, and this is a deep and mystical thing that is difficult for us to understand. But God has a angel or a messenger. A word is that that is the one who speaks to the prophets. Okay, that's who the word of the God is, the word of the Lord. That's the primary understanding of who the word is okay this is why in uh, and, and this is this is very significant because you see things like this okay um i think it's this is uh psalm 32 see here this is the book of psalms chapter 32 i think it's verse 6 nope maybe 33 verse 6 oh 33, 6, yes. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. And by the breath of his mouth, all their host. It's important to see here is that both in Greek and in Hebrew, the word breath, also in older English, right? The word breath is the same word for spirit. That's why if you read the King James Bible, it says Jesus, quote, gave up the ghost, right? Um uh, modern translations will say he breathed his last, right? He he died. He breathed his last breath, and he died on the cross. The word breath, I don't know if this is true in Arabic as well or not, but the word breath and spirit is the same. So you might see some translations um, refer to it as the spirit of his mouth. Let me see. Uh, breath of again there. Um, let's try Lexum, more breath. Um, let's see here. Where's my Darby? The Dewey Rooms. Yeah, look at this, right? In the word of the Lord, the heavens were established, and all the power of them by the spirit of his mouth. Okay, so, um, that's, that's important. Okay, because what you have mentioned here is the word of the Lord. And the so the word of the Lord, the spirit of his mouth. There's this three threeness that's already being mentioned here. And uh, this is how we understand like Genesis 1, how God spoke, right? You read Genesis 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was uh, void and empty. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God moved over the waters, and God said, right, let there be light, be light made, light was made. So um, God speaks, and his spirit's there, and that's how the creation was made, right? That's what uh, pro, uh, uh, Psalm 33, verse 6 is saying, by the word of the Lord and by the spirit of his mouth, right? And so you have this um, tripartite um, understanding of God, 
Now, this is way before the Council of Nicaea. This is way before we even get to talking about Jesus at all, okay? Uh, and what's also useful is uh, looking at, for example, the wisdom of Sirach, okay? Um, the wisdom of Sirach will, will uh, sorry, not wisdom of Sirach, wisdom of Solomon, yeah, Wisdom of Solomon, uh, chapter hmm, 8, I think. Chapter 10. Ah, uh, hold on. Oh, here it is. Uh, God of my fathers and Lord of mercy who has made all things with thy word and by thy wisdom hath appointed man, right? But check this out. He says he made all things by his word. If we go here to uh, wisdom chapter 19, um, we'll see this interesting passage about the word. Uh, maybe it's 17. Yep, 18. So it says, Thy almighty word leapt down from heaven from thy royal throne as a fierce conqueror into the midst of the land of destruction with a sharp sword carrying thy unfeigned command. And he stood and filled all things with death and standing on the earth reached to heaven. Okay. This is a reference to the, the death angel, right? Uh, during the Exodus narrative, where um, God kills the firstborn of Egypt because the Egyptians were killing the firstborn uh, of Israel. The last plague God uh, puts on them is the death of all the firstborn in Egypt. And there's this angel who does this work, okay? And so wisdom of Solomon is identifying that angel as the almighty word. And notice... The Almighty Word leaps down from heaven from thy God's royal throne, thy royal throne. Okay, so the 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 angel of the of of God, the Yahweh angel, right? Um, he sits on God's throne with God. Okay, this is a, a deep mystery. Okay. Um, yeah, it's it's amazing. The Almighty, Thy Almighty Word. Notice how the Word is Almighty, right? The Word itself is Almighty. I can check the King James. My bad. Oops. Uh, King James, KJVA. There it is. You can check the King James. Also there, Thine Almighty Word, right? If I look at it in Latin, and I probably will. It'll probably say omnip. Uh, Omnipotatum. Um, let's see here. Latin. Yep. Omnipotens, sermo to us, the gylo, regulibus, sedibus. Right? So, yeah, the almighty word. Okay. So, this is, um, this is a, 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 a deep, uh, subject. This is before Jesus. Now, the book of the Wisdom of Solomon uh, was written about 50 years before Jesus was born. Okay, and this is this is vital, 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 vital. Okay, um, because when we go into John one, okay, verse one, this is what we are greeted with. 
Let's bring it into English. My bad. Still in Latin. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. Without Him was not made anything that uh, that was made. Right? So, um, this Word of God created all things, right? God created all things through His Word by speaking or whatever, right? This This is a mystical reality. God creates all things according to, uh, by his word, the word was always with him. The word is divine, just like he's divine. Now, you'll notice here, um, to be to be strict with the Greek, uh, it says, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was divine. And you can take a look at this here. I'll, I'll show you why I put it that way. Um, in our he in ho logo, see this phrase here? Ho, right? That means the, right? So the logos and the logos was pros ton theon. Ton is another difficult article in Greek, okay? So ton theon means the God. And God was the logos, right? Um, and this right here, notice how over here, theos has the definite article and over here it does not. So a better way maybe of reading this is in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was divine. Okay. The point being though, is that there was never a point where God did not have his word, this messenger, this angel of the Lord. Okay. The Yahweh angel. Um, God has made himself appear in um, uh, in a visible way to Abraham. God has made himself appear in a visible way to uh, Moses. God has made himself appear in a visible way to Isaiah, right? Isaiah says um, uh, that he saw the Lord, right? High and lifted up. Let's take a look at that. Um, Isaiah, I believe it's chapter 6. Let's see here. And the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne. Okay? So this is somebody who sees God. Oh, my gosh. Ezekiel is even crazier with this. Um, uh, anyway, I, I could go on and on and on and on and on and on and about this, right? But the point is the, the word of God is God's emissary. And he is divine, and there's never been a time that he has not existed, okay? And what's really cool is this. Check this out, okay? This is uh, before um, Christianity, about the same time as Christianity. There's this guy named uh, uh, Philo of Alexandria, all right? Okay, and um, what Philo of Alexandria does is he act he actually calls um, the Word of God um, the Son of God. Here it is: For the Father of the universe has caused him to spring up as the eldest son, who in another passage, he, Moses, calls the firstborn, and who is thus born, imitating the ways of his father, has formed such and such species, looking to his archetypal patterns. Okay? So Philo states that the Logos was the first begotten son of the father. Okay? So this is like, essential. This is stuff that is pre-Christian referring to the Word of God as the Son of God. Free Jesus. Before Jesus. This is uh, essential. Okay? Um, another one, which is really interesting, is this threefold revelation of God, where um, if you look at Genesis uh, chapter 15, I believe. It may not be 15 here. 
Nope, that's not it. Maybe 13. 12. 11. No, not 12. Let me see here. No. 13. Maybe it is 15. No, it's 18. I bet. 18. Um, here he goes. And the Lord appeared, notice, appeared uh, to him by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the door of tent in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked, behold, three men, three, one, two, three, were standing in front of him. And when he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed himself to the earth. And he said, O oh Lord, notice he sees three men, and yet he refers to them in the singular, O oh Lord. If I have found favor in your sight, do not pass by your servant. Okay? Now, it's interesting, this phrase, if I have found favor in your sight, right? Um, if you go over here to uh, Genesis 6, okay, uh, it says, Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord, right? So this is a divine thing that Abraham is experiencing. Right? If I have found favor in your sight, just like Noah, okay, um, stay. Okay, and then what happens after that? Okay, well, that's 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 enough, right? I, I just wanted to set that up as um what's going on with Philo of Alexandria. God uh, Abraham sees three men, calls them Lord in the singular, and notice. It does says that the Lord appeared to him by the Oaks of Mamre. Okay. So um, I'm going to go back here, Philo of Alexandria. Um, we're going to see here threefold divine vision. In his allegorical commentary on the visit of the three men, Abraham and Genesis. Philo 18, uh, Genesis 18, Philo says, uh, When then, as at noontide, God shines around the soul, and the light of the mind fills it through and through, and the shadows are driven from it by the rays which pour all around it, the single object presents to it a triple vision. The single object. Who's the single object? God. Single object. Okay? Presents to it a triple vision. One representing the reality, the other two, the shadows reflected from it. Our life and the light, uh, which our senses perceive, give us somewhat similar experience. For objects standing or moving can often cast two shadows at once. Um, no one, however, should think the shadows can be properly spoken of. Oh, goodness, can I not see more? Oh, won't let me know more. Okay. Um, but basically, he says, um, I used to have the book myself, but I let someone borrow it. Uh, but in that passage, he says, on one side is his creative power, and one side is his royal power. And he, he compares it to, you know, if you're standing out in the, on, a, on a sunny day in an afternoon, right? And you look at your shadow, you'll have two shadows. You have one on the right and one on your left. So there's you and your two shadows. So it's a threefold image. Right, and so he says, when a person uh, has the spirit of God shine on them, they be behold a threefold image of God. Right, so this is interesting. And notice the two shadows come from the one casting the shadow. So what I would say is this: the one God, the Father, the two shadows that He casts is the Son and the Spirit. Okay the creative power, and the royal power. Why do I say the creative power is the Son? Well, because he created all things by his word, right? Um, so this is this is uh, deep stuff, okay? So Christians, essentially, is they have inherited this deep and rich tradition of the word of God in the scriptures being understood to be a, a person, right, who comes to the prophet. Uh, the messenger of God or the angel of the Lord being a, a visible uh, uh, aspect of the divine God, okay? Um, 
and also the word of God being called the Son of God, and also the angel of the Lord sitting on the throne, or sorry, the, the, the word of the Lord sitting on the throne of God, okay? And all we've done is noticed that's Jesus. That's Jesus. That being became a man, okay? That being became a man and revealed himself to us in the ultimate way. So where Muslims, the ultimate and final revelation, the word of God is the Quran. For Christians, the word of God primarily is Jesus. And the texts of the scriptures, you see the word scripture in English, it smacks of religiosity, okay? But in Greek, it's just graphe, it's writing, the writings, okay? Um, we don't, you know, Greek doesn't have a special word for scripture. So what you see is the writings, okay? Um, we might say the holy writings, right? And they're holy because they testify to God. They testify who God is. And they are uh, a series of books and uh, uh, a giant compilation of God's interaction with his people for the millennia, right? Thousands of years of it. It's not just one document. It's not just one utterance. It's not just a small period of time. And that is why, in my opinion, the, the, the Bible is so much more impressive than the Quran. It's so much more impressive than the Quran. Um, and we can, we can talk about how some words are misspelled or, uh, you know, seeming, seeming contradictions or whatever, okay? But when you get down to it, the person or the, the, what reveals God? Right? The word of God is that which reveals God. And that which reveals God has been the angel of the Lord, the word of the Lord, the son of God, Jesus incarnate. That's what we believe, okay? And um, hopefully this has been beneficial to you. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the description down below. I'm more than happy to go over that with you. All right, guys, Godspeed. Bye.